Candace can't take her eyes off of Hiroko. Fair. You know what? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> what a team. Good day, good peeps. Another fine day in the year of the... Push this down just a little bit. <laughs> of the Radiance. Shining brightly, Toon Link Dave. Anomaly, the Anomaly Cars, Bravo. If you know me as the uh, Phenomenal One. But to most, I'm the United States. And welcome back to another phenomenal, fantastic episode of preseason. Right the week before we get into Agents of Chaos. And it's the same day that Fire Emblem and Gage releases, I think, of the... Dongon Rampa Hunger Games. And I think it's also the day that Persona 3 releases on Steam, which is exciting to me. Um, we're not done with Strikers for that. Uh, we're not done with Strikers for the playthrough, but we're getting close. So Persona 3, I feel like we'll probably be starting sometime. How many more Saturdays are there left in just two? We'll probably be starting like early February, somewhere in that general range. And I'm ready for it. I'm excited for it. That being said, I think <laughs> I think we'll be ready for it. I think I'm excited for it. <laughs> That's the future. Also dropping this week, Genshin 3.4, I think. And it's been a second since I've played Genshin daily. I still pick it up, like, maybe once a week if I have the time. But we have not had, like, a Genshin episode in a long time. And Genshin drops characters... Like, Snoop drops it like it's hot. Uh, we got all these characters. <laughs> we got a bunch of the characters from Inazuma. We've got characters from, um, Sumeru. I think, I mean, technically we have characters from, I think, um, Leeway too. Just new characters. Characters that haven't, who weren't in the last Genshin preseason episode that we did. As well as characters... Who haven't appeared because we have just stuck some characters who appeared you know who came into existence after that episode existed but we got to get some people they're doing they have their visions on them we got them. the wanderer is here with azuru and i felt like you know what they might mesh a little bit i think somehow some way they would get along team spider features tainari and taichi tainari I, I didn't know, I didn't feel like there was like a really, really good matchup for Tainari. I think it could have been Kizakura, but I have Kizakura later down here on the list. Taichi, I was like, I could see Taichi, you know, he is very, def not defensive, but like he wants to defend the things that he loves and he'll do whatever it takes for. And you know what? Tainari would do the same. Team mates consist of Milu and freaking Saika, both very musically inclined. Both probably, you know, top-notch dancers. We love to see it. Team Polar Bear sees the sweet onion radish child and Kizakura. That's where I put him in. I was like, you know what? They both appreciate knowledge. One was a teacher. One has so much wisdom. Who would have thunk? As we go on, we see Team Boar Layla and Mitarai. Both very hard workers who need some sleep. <laughs> Honestly, these two just fit together real, real nice, like, real easy. And Team Wolf, we see Farazan and Chisa. I don't even really need to explain it. I really don't. Team Gorilla sees Dory and Togami because, you know, why? It's the richness. It's, it's all about the richness. You better believe it. Team Lion sees Sino and Munakata. Both like the strong arm of justice. In their own way. Uh, Team Viper, we see Kole and Mikon. Both will do whatever it, uh, they can to help you out. But both, uh, you know, a little bit meek, a little bit clumsy. Team Owl. We got, and you know, look. Once again, I haven't played Genshin in a while. Candace. I like Candace a lot. A lot. And Mama, <laughs> who I also like a lot. I, I'm, spoiler alert, I'll be rooting for Team Owl today. 
Team Falcon, which I think is actually a really good name for this team. Uh, Alhatham and Tengen. I feel like there's a better match for Alhatham. But I just stuck him with Tengen today. Team Cobra sees Yunjin and Kaede. They could put on a performance of a lifetime, a little piano, a little bit of opera. It'd be beautiful. Team Toad, Yelan, and Celeste. I bet, once again, no explanation needed. It's going to be a big gamble here today. Roll the dice. Team Howler Monkey. Yao Yao, who's brand new, who... Yao Yao is the only character on this list that I literally know nothing about. But I almost nothing about. I know enough about Yao Yao that I don't think Crazy Oko is a good pair. But I know Crazy Oko eats those little gummy animals. And one of them looks like Yao Yao's little yellow creature. <laughs> so that's why they're together. Team Whale sees uh, Heizo and Kyoko. Um... Which is just right, because detectives. Uh, team Salamander is just a fun team of Yoimiya and Ibuki. And I think we might have had Yoimiya in that last episode, but I'm not sure and I didn't feel like checking, so she's here again today. Team Puppy sees Sayu and Chiaki, the sleepy bunch. Uh, Sayu's definitely been in tag team action, but I was like, you know what, put Sayu in here. Um... Because we have all these Inazuma representatives. Team T-Rex sees Kokomi and Seiko, both will heal ya. One of them a much better leader, but both will heal ya. Uh, both incredible friends. Team Gazelle sees Kuki and Mahiru. And I don't know if this is the best pair in the world, but I think they would have a mutual respect for each other and the dunderheads of gentlemen that they work with. Team Zebra <laughs> sees Sarah and Peko, and I think this might be like the, the closest pair in terms of character traits that we have. Team Bunny sees Ayato and Rantaro. Team Lobster with Ayaka and Kurumi, which I felt like didn't fit at first, but it kind of grew on me because technically Kurumi is a leader, a prime minister, I believe. Uh, Ayaka's a leader as well. And I think that kind of meshed in that sense. And then we go back and I'm like, okay, you know what? They both got a little bit of grace, a little bit of uh, little leadership, a little bit of leadership. I think, you know, they might mesh. Team Unicorn sees Goro and Gon to the Wolf Boys. And lastly, Team Phoenix. You know how everyone here is paired up with a Don't Armba character, and last week I may or may not have forgotten our AWE champion, Camilla. Well, I put her on a team with Lisa. And the simps began to bark. The simps were howling at the moon. It's time to get the show on the road. Let me know first, second, third, who you got. Who you're rooting for. Who's your favorite? either Inazuma or Sumeru character. Technically, Day is not on this list. I love Day a lot. Um, she's not on this list because at this point in time, she's technically not playable, right? Yes. Technically, she's not playable, but technically, I'll hate them is. Yes, that is correct. Day is coming soon. I will be pulling for Day. Um, but your comments are important. Make first, second, third, and tell me who your favorite Genshin character is from either of those two regions. And if you... <laughs> And the more I talk to people, the more I see that people, um, just don't have the storage space for Genshin, and when I went to go and update, I was like, oh my gosh, this game is massive. <laughs> it really is massive. Um, like, I'm not even close to having, like, a storage issue, because I got... Do I have three SS... I have three SSDs in this computer. Um, three solid-state drives. One of them, or I think two of them are NVMEs, and then one is, uh, a block one. That being said... That's the future. The now is that your comments are important, like this one. Like this one. And I know which one I want to read, but I'm going to have to find it again because I accidentally closed the, <laughs> closed the app. <laughs> sure enough, did close the app. It was Thunder's comment from the Pokemon... Thank you, loading. The Pokemon episode from Scarlet and Violet last week, saying, My favorite character from Scarlet Violet gotta go to Clive. Love Team Star storyline as a whole, but Clavel is a close second in terms of his favorite characters. <sighs> it made me laugh, and it, I know it made a lot of you laugh too, because it was it was a good comment. I'm not gonna. <laughs> That's technically a legal competitor. You can put him in the uh, put him in the Hunger Games. Give him a team. That being said, I don't expect this episode to go on for very long. I really don't. Because we're starting off and half of the field has visions. That's something we just have to- that's just a, a fact of life. It is a facto life. So, without further ado, let's see where that fact takes us at the start 
of round one. Are you ready? It doesn't matter if you're ready. We're going anyway. Yes, let's go. Good job, Kyoko. Love to see it. And you know what else we love to see? The horns. And what are they doing? Oh, yes. They're sounding. Thank you, horn bearers. You love to see them. You love to feel the music in your soul. You got that music. Let's find out who has this victory. As Kizakura has found a table, hopefully nobody goes through it. Well, I hope somebody goes through it. Chiaki just wants to be helpful. Mikan visits a pumpkin patch out of uh, outside of Avi's Wares and Despairs, which burnt down a lot. <laughs> Candace looks around for stuff to scrounge. Um, Kyoko has been hot on Freaking Sayaka's trail for days now. Freaking Sayaka thinks she's gotten away, but Kyoko's deduced her final location delivered the final blow. Yoimiya, thanks Ibuki for being there for her. And what better partner could she have? She could have a better partner, but Ibuki has done some of the best work in these Hunger Games. Two-time champion of champions, two-time tag team champion, wants to be world pancake champion someday. She's gotta get in that match first. Mitrai attacks and kills Heizo in front of Kyoko. There's nothing Kyoko can do. Rantaro finds a pumpkin and is overflowing with the power of Halloween. In January? Who would have thunk? Ibuki thinks about what she did to up here. Mahi was being adorable as always. Camilla ambushes Rantaro, eviscerates him. Pekko finds an anomalous car. Wait, aren't those extinct? Well, no, I got one right here. Kuki summons a shock so powerful it fries Gonta alive. Celeste tries to kill Dory, but Dory tries to bribe her. Celeste takes the money and then kills Dory anyway. She's like, well, I got the money. Nobody can know how I got it. <laughs> Lisa puts a death color on Kaye Day while she's asleep. Kurumi looks for someone dumb enough to believe her. Oh, dope. Kole just found a fishing rod. Now she can catch, catch all the fish. Izuru. Uses the mysterious gas to knock out Maihu and Aika in order to put death colors on them. Hiroko somehow finds a suit of medieval armor, puts it on, gleams with a dazzling shine. Tingen sees Team Falcon as a bunch of chumps ready to be milked. Tainari gives Taichi the things that he's found. Taichi builds the things, and Tain uh, Tainari's like, huh, it's soothing watching Taichi make all of these fantastic contraptions. Sino feels like he's strong enough to handle anything, and I believe him. Um. Kaede searches for anyone who can get her uh, this collar off of her. I don't think there is anybody, my, my girl. You, you're doomed. Sarah has found a table. Hopefully nobody goes through it. Munakata attempts to kill Kuki, but Mahiru intervenes to protect her. Unfortunately, Mahiru dies in the attempt. We have a whole lot of orange already. Furazan is thinking of plans to get out of here. Uh, Nahida can't help but admire her own genius mind. Alhatham summons massive vines with thorns around Yoimiya, bleeding her dry. Man, that hurts. Hurts me, and we still have so many people perishing. Kokomi uses the power of uh, Hydra to put out Kole's campfire and says, Next time that'll be you. Kole's confused. Uh, Taichi has found Genocide Jack Scissors. Cute boys beware, you're in for a stab and a half. Layla summons a mass sphere of ice, impaling Ayaka. Yelan attempts to kill Sayu, but Chiaki intervenes just in time. Chiaki had to kill Yelan to protect Sayaka's life. Celeste challenges Nilu to a duel. Chal Celeste fights the dust. Nilu's popping off, apparently. Chisa seems unshaken by any of this. The Wanderer creates a sphere of air around Mitrai and Mikan, keeping it there long enough for them to suffocate within. Yo, we're losing so many people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we lost 17 this round. Uh, we'll keep going, though, as Alhatham tries to creep up on Sayu, but Sayu, Gusto Air is able to get away. Yunjin summons a shield, protecting her from Izuru's attack. Yunjin causes the ground beneath Azura to cave in, burying him alive. Yao Yao. And Crazy Oko, their fingers touch by accident, they both blush a little bit. They want to be the best of friends, Ayoto. Uh, entraps Togami and Seiko in a bubble until both of them drown. Crazy Oko isn't sure whether to cry, laugh, or tear her hair out, and Goru uses the power of Geo and summons a giant rock, dropping into the ground, killing Kyoko and Taichi. We lost once again. 17. And I'll be frank. <laughs> we still lost a, a handful of Genshin characters, even though they had the vision advantage. What will unfold? I don't know. But for right now, it's a Claire de Lune 4. Freaking Sayaka, Heiza, Rantaro, Gonta, Dori, Mahiru, Yoimiya, Ayaka, Yelan, Celeste, Mitarai, Mikan, Izuru, Togami, Seiko, Kyoko, Taichi. Well, 17 are gone, 31 remain, and if we have another day like we had today, 
it will be just as bloody. There will be just as much despair. But it's really a, a matter of fact of will that happen. And the only way to find out is to proceed. So are you ready to proceed? To see what unfolds? Let's do it. It is Genshin 2. It is Dongon Impact 2. And as we start it all off, Alhitham says, Yeah, we're gonna keep on with this blood, this bloody, bloody day. Sino. Ooh, and look at that. <laughs> we Once again, I said we don't see it that often, but I did increase the chances a little bit. <clears throat> Round 2 begins with Sino trying to kill Hiroko, but the Mama has diverted the blow with the knight's armor. I'll hit them. Causes blooms in the pond that Faruzan and Kurumi are fighting in. The blooms explode, killing them both. The Archon see Great Virginal and Sarah grant her a Hydro Vision. Kuki eats something she shouldn't have and dies of horrible stomach pains. Hiroko, it's probably something that Ito made. That's Ito's fault. That's on Ito. Hiroko uses the title belt to hit Sayu from behind, leaving her dazed. The pile of flesh that used to be Saika's writhing with maggots. Tainari recalls something about Taichi sobs quietly. Chisa accepts her shadow as Chisa and gains the power of Persona. Will she be able to use it? We'll have to wait and see Pekka. Visits the pumpkin patch outside of Celeste Holiday Mansion, picking up a small pumpkin. Kole can no longer stand still. A lot of this kill her friends. She's feeling heroic. She is a hero. Sayu snaps out of it. Ayato finds a waffle. Really? Fair. Candace can't take her eyes off of Hiroko. Fair. You know what? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> what a team. Uh, Kizakura sets up a stable before grabbing Sayu by the throat. Kizakura then choke slams Sayu through a table. Camilla finds. Oh no. Camilla might be mad that I left her out of that one game. I'm worried for everyone. Yunjin feels protected by her wealth. Nilu knocks out Celeste. And I'm sorry. She's in a fist fight. Puts a death color on her. Crazy Uncle's found a table. Kaede thinks about what she did to end up here. Munakata is on the verge of snapping. The Wanderer sees a tree. And on top of that tree is a mistletoe hanging above. Ibuki feels like jamming out, grabs my soundboard. Wait, I I actually need that. Can you not, Ibuki? Lisa tries to get others to notice her. The Archon see Great Spindle and Tengen and a Dongon Romp. A member now has a vision and it is Animo. Layla finds a plank of wood. Wait, no, that's a seesaw. Nahia tries to build a tank out of six and rocks and succeeds. I, that's about what I expect if she tried to build a tank out of sticks and rocks. Good honor. Chiaki doesn't feel prepared for any of this. Kokomi is being chased by Kizakura. Kokomi has used the power of Hydra to wet the surface behind her, causing Kizakura to slip and break his neck. Guru summons stones around Layla's feet and she's, ooh, she's trapped. Ooh, she's gonna get out of that. And Yao Yao can't stop fawning off of uh, over crazy Yoko. They're just vibing, and this day wasn't nearly as bloody. We actually only lost five. And so for right now, we'll hit a Clarity Loon 4. Farazan, Kurumi, Kuki, Sayu, Kizakura. With another 5 gone, we are 2, count them, 2 people higher than a standard sized game. That being said, there's just one thing and one thing left to do, and that thing is to proceed. Shall we? We shall. Let's click it. Let's hit it. And round three begins. Oh my. As Hiroko stands proudly in that knight's armor, Tainari steals Nahida's tank while she's asleep. Nahida wonders if she should have been just to full her tank's gone. She was like, I gotta build something else. A machine that makes Yakiniku, maybe? Uh, Yunjin finds a dapper pursuit, puts it on its rather fetching. Sino walks into a very strange machine, presses a button, his molecules get all rearranged, and Sino now has ghost powers, Kaye Day. Really doesn't want to, but finds herself having to get rid of I'll hate them, Nilu. Pixar looks neat and cool lying in various places. Yao Yao feels sorry for Layla, frees her from the trap that feels canon for Yao Yao. As much as I know about her, which is the bare minimum. Sarah sets up her table before grabbing Crazy Yoko in a headlock. Sarah then throws Crazy Yoko through a table. Mm. You hate to see that, and you also hate to see this as Wanderer is hanging up that mistletoe, waits beneath it. Ayato throws his waffle at Hiroko like a shuriken and kills her. Killed by waffles, poor mom. Chisa searches for anyone who can get rid of this collar off of her. Tengen's found a dimensional scythe. He's got wind beneath his wings and a scythe in his hand. He's the flying reaper and I'm terrified. Kole wishes that she could go home. Chiaki prints out invitations for a Halloween party. Dory, her corpse is writhing with maggots. It all started. When Alien Device did what it did, it stuck itself upon his wrist with secrets that it hid. Now he's got superpowers. He's no ordinary kid. He's Munakata 10. As Goru spots something shiny in the distance, uh, Layla tries to kill Sarah, but Sarah retaliates and kills her instead. Dark energy swirls around Mitarai's body, and Mitarai is now back as a ghost. Oh my. 
Uh, the Argentine Great Fisherman and Candace grant her a cryo vision, but wait. But she's got a hydro vision on. I'm not gonna ask any questions. Peko stares at the pumpkin. Unable to get pumpkin pie off of her mind, Tinkin and Ibuki surround Lisa in a pond. With the power of Electro, Lisa electrocutes them both. Electro. Dangerous. Camilla finds a seemingly official degree from a powerful Archon. Will she dare to hang it up? Imagine. Y'all imagine. Kokomi feels defeated after losing her teammate. She feels lonely. Kokomi has... Let him in. And with that, we've lost six. Will Kokomi truly embrace the repairman? I don't know, but for right now, it's a Clarity Loon 4. Alhatham, Crazy Yoko, Hiroko, Layla, Tengen, Ibuki. 20 left. 10 more. 10. The perfect 10. Until your saving grace picks. But who will those 10 be? I mean, we. There's only one way to find out, so I mean, like. We don't even really need to check yet. But I want to see what happens next, don't you? Shall we find out? I believe we shall. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do it. Next round sees. A lot of blue. Oh, and then less blue. Uh, Wanderer finds some leather scraps. He's now Cave Wanderer. He's wandered to the past. Goro finds a fishing rod. Now he can catch catch all the fish. Lisa shakes Ayato's hands, but it was a prank. Ayato gets lightly shocked, leaving him diced. Camilla cranks up the heat. It is July. Can the tribute survive the heat? <laughs> I can't. Kaede finds a slingshot. How quaint. It might be useful in a pinch. Mitarai plays around with his incorporeal body, passing through the various... Uh, things to pass the time, but Chisa finds a big stick, probably comes in handy to bash some skulls. I don't think we've really seen the big stick show up in a long, long time. Huh. Munakata transforms to an alien with a body as hard as diamond. Munakata then proceeds to headbutt Sarah and the Wanderer. Sara. Wanderer. You hate to see it. Nahira tries to build a tank out of sticks and rocks. Again, it's useless this time, but it looks cool. Yunjin notices that and she says, Ah, uh, I don't need any tanks in this game. <laughs> and then dies. <laughs> but we'll go in order. Ayato puts collars on Munakata and Kole. Chiaki and Nilo are sunbathing. Nilo sneakily replaces Chiaki's sunscreen with honey, attracting bears who maul her. Yunjin is sick and tired of Nahira. The she puts a- she puts literally- A bounty on the head of an Archon. Alright, Yunjin. I mean, like, I mean, I could use that, that 20,000 more. Every more accounts. Uh, <laughs> for real, though. Tainari drives around in a tank, in his cool tank, rather, and another tank is in place. This is a, becoming a really dangerous game, actually. Um, oil play shot by Kaede Day. With her slingshot, his Yao Yao with a disorienting force. Yao Yao's day is Peko ambushes Kaede Day and Yunjin, slaughtering them both. Saika's dead. Kole casts her rod in the river, pulls out a second tank, Sino possesses Lisa, walks her right off of a cliff, and Nilu with her water, Nilu with her hydro, gets a stray water balloon, and summertime she can unleash summer themed chaos on unsuspecting tributes, 13 people remain. Oh no, <laughs> alright? Oh no. I don't know what's gonna unfold, but I do know that we've lost another seven folks. And therefore, it's a Clarity Loon 4. Candace, Sarah, The Wanderer, Chiaki, Kaye Day, Yunjin, Lisa. There is a chance that both of these tanks get used. There is a chance that both of these tanks get used, and it immediately brings us to like the final two, or maybe even the final one. Uh, also, do remember Mitarai is in place and he's a ghost. So we could have a possession victory, something we saw a couple times last season, but have not seen in a hot second. What will unfold? That much is uncertain, but even the most uncertain things will be met with certainty as we proceed. Are you ready? Let me ask you one more again. Are you ready? Let's do it. Next round we see... Ooh, there's one! Ooh, there's one! Peko chucks their pumpkin into the sky. It plummets right onto Camilla's head, killing her. 
Nilu tosses her water balloon from one hand to the other. Tainari tries to kill Nahida for the bounty. Nahida narrowly escapes. Yao Yao snaps out of it. Goro casts his rod in the river, pulls out a sea bass more like a C plus. Oh dope, Munakata just found a water gun that tricked out Super Toker is bound to cause some chaos. And I think because Peko got this kill early, there can't be another tank usage, but I am uncertain. I don't think there can be. Tainari is alive with that tank though. The thing that could happen is, Mitsurai could bring somebody back and the tank could immediately be used. That's why I'm just going real slow here. After Kole fires an explosive round from her tank, the blast catches Nahida, Munakata, Yao Yao, Chisa, Nilu, and Saino. In its wake. Huh? And we have another ghost in play, as Chiaki has been reanimated as well. Ayato trips and falls in a really bad way, breaking his neck. Kokomi and Peko hike the cliffs around in Gold Forge Mountain. And I, I think I read that Ayato trips and falls. He's breaking his neck. It's unfortunate. However, that brings us to five with two ghosts in play. I expected with two tanks in play, at least one to get used. The Archon is gone. And we are down to your final five. It's an interesting final five, especially with these two ghosts. After this, final, potentially final, Clarity Luna of the episode four. Camilla, Nahida, Munakata, Yao Yao, Chisa, Nilu, Sino, Ayato. And so, remember, the top two will go on to uh, that season 13 premiere. But for right now, we still got five people around, two ghosts, and one more thing to make. Your picks might not have done so well. It was a pretty big game, you guys. It was a pretty big game. But more importantly, you get to make some new picks. And those picks, you know what we call them. Saving Grace Picks. Mitarai is a ghost, but let's all look at the one who still remains here, Goro. The one and only he has killed, he's got Geo on his side. And he wants to come through in his first game. And walk out as a winner, wants to go into that championship match. Jiaki's also a ghost. She could possess somebody and we could have a couple people go on. Let's see. What else, what else is going on? Let's see. We go on, we see that, we see that, we see Pekka. Pekko's still in there, and Pekko, I believe... Where's my list? These dang ghosts, I know, it's, it's all the way over there. I don't know if Pekko is still, uh, is already in the premiere. I'd have to get up and check, because I see it over there. <laughs> Taunting me. But Pekko, if she's not, could make that list. We go on, and we still see Kole, who's had... Not like a bad game, but here at the end, she got that tank KO, and that gives her momentum. And momentum means a lot of things in these games sometimes. And we also see Kokomi. Kokomi has only taken out Kizakura. She's kind, she's a leader, but she's got summertime sadness. She's got a hydro vision, and most importantly, she has let him in. And lastly, we have Tainari. Tainari, he's been scrappy, and he still has a tank in play. This is the crazy thing, if, and I say if, both ghosts come back at the start of the next round, Tainari can immediately use his tank to get a victory. That is something that could happen, that is a possibility that we all have to keep in our minds. So when we talk about our final five, when you talk about the saving grace picks, you have to keep that in mind. Make them. For a second there in the comments, comment in your comment. Do all the things that you have to do, and most importantly, like and subscribe if you haven't already, because... It helps. It truly does. I'm gonna make some picks though. And I think I gotta go after that. I gotta go Kokomi. I gotta go Kokomi. She's found friendship. I can almost feel that she's found that friendship. And I think it's gonna carry her. Give me Kole for a second. And then lastly, give me Goro. I think we're Genshin sweeping a day. I believe it. I believe it wholeheartedly. However, it's your final five. And they're all standing. And what we like to call caught, and what we like to call within our final five. In a crisis. A crisis of what, you ask? A crisis? Of fate. Let's do it. It is your final 
five. Let's see what unfolds. Ooh! Things are happening, things are- I'm gonna have to get my list anyway. Gosh darn it, I'm gonna have to get up, go over there, get my list, and I don't feel like it. <laughs> I'm just gonna write it on the back of this thing and transfer it over. Ladies and gentlemen, Tainari is taking a advantage of this heat nova's a lemonade stand, which is usually bad luck. Kokomi challenges Goro and Pekko to an anything goes pancake eating competition in Pekko. Oh yeah. She wants that World Pancake Championship opportunity. And she might just get it. Well, I mean, she will get the opportunity. She might get the title. We'll have to wait and see if she will. As we go on, I don't know if anyone perishes. Only people get brought back today. Pekka is attacked by a pack of wolves, but feeds them as they're relaxed by the campfire. She's got a pet wolf of her own, Chiaki. Has found the corpse of Seiko, possesses it. Chiaki is now possessing Seiko, and what a powerful person she has chosen. Kole can't handle the stress after losing a team, and now has become cowardly, Lomel. Goro. Cast his rod in the river, pulled out a my soundboard? Wait, does it even still work? That is technically a revival item as well. That's something we have to keep in mind. Nobody perishes today, but tomorrow could be very different. Who? tomorrow is very different. <laughs> it is very different indeed. <laughs> Tainari has found a wish ring. Well, his wish is not going to come true because Mitrai takes him out through ghastly means. Seiko cleans up. <laughs> Sarah's a rotten corpse. Thank you, Seiko. Thank you. Goro uses my soundboard, but gets confiscated for playing copyrighted music for shame. And Kole is surrounded by foes, but manages to turn the tables and defeat them all. She was feeling cowardly, but she's also heroic at the same time. Kole is Kurs the Cowardly Dog. Who would've thunk? Kokomi, Goro, and Pekko. Oh, uh, are only left. Or rather, only left a couple of scratches on Kole. Who would've thunk? We're at your final two then, and it's Kole and a revived Seiko, isn't it? Yeah, that's wild. So after this uh, terrible turnabout for Tainari, Kokomi, Goro, Pekko. As it stands, unless there's another revival of sorts, it is Kole versus Seiko, who's being possessed by Chiaki. And those two would go on. But I think Seiko's already in. I should probably just go and get the list. Should I just go and get the... Maybe I'll just go and get the list. I'm gonna get the list real quick. Hold on. I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna get the list. While we're here. <sighs> da -da 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 -da. Pekko's on the list. But Seiko is actually not. So Seiko would need this. So right now it would be Kole, Seiko, and technically Chiaki via ghostly means. That's interesting. <laughs> That's really interesting. Don't forget though, we have Mitrai who's still around. He could possess somebody in these final three as well. I'm uncertain, but I am indeed curious to find out just who. Will it be Kole, Seiko. Seiko who's being possessed by a ghost, by an apparition of sorts, could come out on top of this whole thing with Chiaki possessing her, earning them both entry into that season 13 premiere, or could it be Kole? Right now, as it stands, it's both of them who will win this match, though, and will Mitarai bring somebody back for his sake as well. But thinking about it this way, I'm pretty sure Mitarai, yes, is already in that matchup as well. So if Mitarai brings somebody back, he'd want to do it strategically and bring back somebody who is not already in the premiere. Who would he choose? <laughs> Will he choose anybody, though? That's the real question. Kole, Seiko. Seiko. Kole. I think it's time we find out, unless there's another revival. We. See. Oh man, Gonta's back as a ghost as well. Hold up. Mitrai misses being able to have dinner. Seiko misses, I'm sorry, mixes more AV brand disinfectant. Thank you. And Kole is hiding out, but she can't hide for long because Seiko ambushes Kole and eviscerates her. It is game. I gotta admit, 
Seiko, she's an unstoppable one. As we scroll down, these two boys could have possessed anybody, but they said, oh, eh, man, maybe not. Instead, one woman stood on top of the rest, and it is somebody who didn't have a vision to start. Instead, gosh, Koei had nine KOs. <laughs> she really was. She's Kurt's a cowardly dog out here. And that's going to be her name for the rest of my existence, for the rest of her existence on this channel. And for her today, she gets a terrible turnabout for. Seiko. No, Kole. What am I talking about? Seiko won. And speaking of Seiko winning, I can say that she is indeed your winner. Representing Team T-Rex. Although she perished with Chiaki inside of her, a possession victory happens again. Now earning herself and Chiaki a spot. Even though she already had that spot. Along with Kole. Seiko, via possession, takes the win. I'll be frank, this actually worked out very cleanly because Seiko was already in. It, it basically just means that uh, Chiaki and Kole get in. Instead of Seiko, Chiaki, and Kole, so it's still likely going to be a very even finale. Unless next week we see another possession victory or something of the like. Ladies and gentlemen, that was all she wrote. Kole used the tank and got three kills as well, giving an astounding nine. She ended up both heroic and cowardly, and she is now most definitely Kole the Cowardly Dog. And I'm eating every, every single moment of that. You better believe. <laughs> Kole the Cowardly Dog show starring Kole the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> Sickly as a child, she was tended to by Tainari. <laughs> Alright, I'm done. We're done here. Although, Pekka had three KOs, Aiyatom had three, Murakata, I'm having a good time, had three, Ayato had three, everyone else with two or less. Kole the Cowardly Dog. Thank you, RNG, for that one. That's all the time we got. Uh, next week, it is Agent of Chaos action. And then somehow, some way, the week after that is going to be a big old week on the channel. We'll have the singles premiere, we'll have the tag team premiere, the, the, the tag team premiere, we will have Friday Night Inferno. On the sa that very same Friday. And then that Sunday, we'll have the OC doubleheader singles, champion followed, uh, singles championship followed by tag team championship. I think that's how I usually do it. Might be their way around, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Where I will be defending the OC Championship, uh, the OC Tag Team Championship alongside Kagami Shinami. Gold Team Rules. I'm excited for that, and I know you guys are as well. I wonder who's going to walk uh, into Season 13 with the titles. Uh, next week, we will go ahead and reveal the gimmick, because I think I have, I've kind of been decided on a gimmick for a bit. And I think I know how I want to do it. So we're just going to knock it. We're going to knock it out of the park. And it's going to be a fun time. In the year of the Radiance, Toon Link, Dave, Bravo, and Alma, the Anomaly Cars, and United States Savior taking off. Toodaloo. Flight crew. Until then, and until, I don't know. So, like, real talk. Uh, I've, I've, so, this Friday, it may be, may be a stream for, um, not a long stream, but like a quick stream for, ba, boo, ba. Fire Emblem Engage, because I'm so excited for it. <laughs> I really am. I've been having a lot of fun with Fire Emblem. Um, might be a quick stream for that. Probably no more than two hours, because I'll probably still have to render something, and I'll probably have to play more of it. I will probably do it for two hours, and then I'll probably keep playing for like another two hours for the episode that comes out on Monday. I'm just excited for it. That's all I gotta say. We'll see. Um... But that's also if my SD card comes in at a reasonable time. Because I'm getting a new SD card for my Switch. Um, so I don't have to, like, delete any games to make room for new games. I'm just going to upgrade it by, like, four times the size. <laughs> that's where we are at this point. So until then, toodaloo, flight crew, until maybe tonight. If not tonight, I don't want to say tomorrow, like Saturday, because I know there's an upload. And Sunday, I think I want to do something. <sighs> it's also Sunday is, um... Game D on the Discord. If you haven't checked out the Discord, check out the Discord. It's a lot of fun. We have good times over there. 
Um, toodaloo, fly crew, I think we're done. We're done. <laughs> I'm going to work it all out. Thank you for watching.